All right. And we are officially live. I am very excited. And before I forget, I'm also going to record this. Perfect. So welcome, everyone. I have been doing these impromptu um, interviews lately, and sort of my intention for them is to bring on individuals, experts in their field, and really shine a light into some areas that I'm just really interested in, but definitely not an expert in. And today I'm beyond excited to bring in A, one of our community members, and also an IFS therapist. And we're going to get into exactly what that is. We're going to talk about things like entity attachments, uh, multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder, um, and really what it means to be a quantum being, not just a binary being, in a body and how we can unify all aspects of self and we'll probably cover clones as well, and even walk-ins and how all of that happens um, under that umbrella of IFS. So welcome, Joe. Thank you so, so much for being here. Um, if you want to like introduce yourself and give us a little overview of your background before we dive in, that would be fantastic. Sure. Thanks. Yes, yeah, it's, it's wonderful to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. This is uh, really exciting. Um, yeah, I'm I'm Joe. I'm uh, based in the the UK. Uh, I live in Scotland, and I've been working in the field of of mental health and therapy for about twenty years or so now. So I'm um, and I use different approaches in my therapy. Um, so I'm, I'm IFS informed therapist, but I also use uh, nonviolent communication (NVC). That's another really powerful therapy that uh, I like to use um, in my sessions. Um, and IFS is something that I kind of only discovered a couple of years ago, like even though I've been in the field for a long time, it's one of those things that has, was, has just not been talked about really. It had been very much kind of below the radar. It wasn't really in the mainstream of the uh, therapeutic community or the, um, you know, and definitely not the kind of psychiatric side of uh, of therapy so, but since i since i discovered it, it it dovetailed so well with what i was kind of already doing I've, i'd always kind of talked about people so you've got a part that feels like this and a part that feels like that and then when i read um you know dr dick schwartz's book it just it just clicked for me and i was i was kind of hooked and like devoured the whole thing and then i've been like um searching out all his stuff on youtube and i've done the online course and it's for me ifs is um such a, a powerful therapeutic system to use and it's so it's so intuitive as well and that's and that's the thing and it and it, and it changes some of the paradigms about how how we think especially in the west about the the mind how the mind operates and um it being a, like an internal family that's what you know, that's why it's called an internal family systems like we have this internal family of different parts that are all operating all and all doing their own things and they're all um kind of be thought of as like complete personalities within us so yeah. And so about two years ago is when I um, kind of like officially decided to start therapy. I think I've been I've dabbled in it my whole life and my parents tried to put me in it as a kid and I just wasn't ready. Like you've got to be ready to accept the help. And so I went on to it was like some sort of like psychology dot com, you know, and, and it has all these therapists on it. And I went through probably like 10, 15 different pages, just scrolling through profiles. And I finally found, you know, the right one. And um, and when I first talked with her, she's like, oh, I specialize in IFS. And I'm like, well, what's that? And she's like, it's called integrated family systems. I'm like, oh, well, you're probably the wrong person for me because um, I don't have family issues, right? Like that's not really mm -hmm. my thing. And so she kind of laughed and she's like, no, it has nothing to do with your family. It has everything to do with, you know, the aspects, the parts of you that are inside. And I'm like, what? I've never heard of this before. You know, not that I'm super, you know, therapy informed or whatever, um, but the way that I understand IFS, right? Integrated family systems, is it and obviously correct me if I'm wrong because I'm I'm no expert, but from my terms, from my perspective, mm -hmm. it's this understanding that all of us, um, 
especially if we've injured some sort of trauma. And for me, I pull in the Akashic records and I pull in the past life aspect of it too, which is like, it just gets crazier. And then you pull in the starseed aspect and the cosmic aspect. And it's like, oh my God, we have so much going on. <laughs> um, and I'm, I'm sure I've, I've blown my own therapist's mind a couple of times. And I've even told her, I'm like, I'm probably not your usual client, but like, just go with it. Um, and she's really open-minded. But yeah, so from my understanding, IFS is, it's like, especially when there's a trauma that happens, there's a part of us that sort of breaks off in that moment. And it's a defense mechanism. It's like, for example, if you had a trauma at six years old, um, there would be a part of you at that age, at that kind of level, maturity level that breaks off. And it's like, you know, you can name those parts like little Liz, for example. And that part of you is sort of stuck in the background and traumatized. And there's a protector that steps in and tries to protect that part of us. And I believe that mm -hmm. those parts are called exiles. And then the protectors are protecting, you know, those exiles. And, um, and then later on, you know, it's like, I don't know why every time I see someone yell, I flinch, right? And it's, ooh, mm -hmm. it's actually that part. Or I don't know why I have these control tendencies because internally I feel out of control with certain aspects or parts of myself. So in the moment, even though I'm not aware of those parts, I'm trying to control my outer reality. And I think a lot of us walk around with these aspects of ourselves that are these hurt, traumatized parts that are stuck in the past or stuck in that that place. And then when we start to do this work and, and unfold and unravel aspects of ourselves, we recognize those parts. We recognize the um, the roles that each part is playing to protect us, um, you know, in the moment. And, and then we realize that we're actually not a whole individual, that we've been acting as multiple different parts of ourselves. So for example, we're a different person when we go to work, just like we're a different person in front of family. Mm -hmm. And these could yeah. be potentially aspects of our part coming out in different environments, rather than needing to, um, you know, be show up as all of it. Um, so is that like a fairly okay explanation of IFS and like kind of what happens and why there are parts of us inside. Yeah. 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 Kind of. And yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a, a good su summary. Um, but for, and, and the different parts, like I said, have different, um, we call them different things in, in IFS. So like you mentioned the, the exile parts, um, and I think with, with the key thing I should start with is like IFS is one of the first um, systems that proposes this multiple mind theory that says that we're not one um, unified monolithic mind as an individual, which when you think about it is kind of, of logical because we have conflicts and stuff. You, you know, there'll be part of me that says, oh, you know, I'm going to get up early and do go and do some yoga. And there's another part of me that's like saying, no, I want to stay in bed whereas if i was just one unified mind then there'd be no there'd be no conflict there'd be no indecision there um but like you say the the kind of problems arise when um when we're faced by something and it's usually often in childhood that becomes a moment of like emotional overwhelm or a, or a trauma and then the um the part that's feeling that emotion or is overwhelmed by it and so not able to to process it gets stuck with that emotion and then these other parts come in other parts of our personality come in to, to protect who who see who see this um emotion as a threat to the system see like oh this is this is overwhelming this is this is bad this is going to be a problem so i need to protect from that and keep it away and there's um there's two different categories of, of protector parts as well there's like the, the manager parts who a really common example of a manager would be like an inner critic that will, will come up and like the internal voice that says oh no, i shouldn't be doing that i've got to do that. that's you know it's going to be dangerous if if i do that um, or a people please apart that's another kind of typical manager part that kind of tries to manage our behavior keep us in certain situations or keep us out of certain situations so that these these exile parts won't get triggered and, and won't um 
you know, won't risk us feeling that emotional burden that's that's been attached. Mm -hmm. um, and then there's another class of protectors, which uh, we call firefighters, which are there, that, like it, they come in when the exile has been triggered and when the burden's there and they're, they're called firefighters because they just like, you know, they come and kick the doors in and they don't, <laughs> they don't, they don't, don't care about the damage that's caused. They just like got to, you know, put the fire out, mm -hmm. get the exile back hidden, hidden away. So it's not, not a threat to the system. And these, um, the, the uh, appearances that the um, firefighter parts can take can be pretty extreme. You know, they can be things like addiction, um, binge eating mm -hmm. um yeah i mean richard swartz who developed the model he um d developed it working um with anorexic patients and things he said that was how we learned about parts originally that was what he was working oh. in eating disorders and he said he learned that from his patients who would say you know there's a part of me that just wants to binge or there's a part of me that that doesn't like this and then he, he started dialoguing and engaging with those parts and then realized that oh there's you know all these different aspects within a person all these personality aspects that are in in conflict with each other but um but the and the key thing is though they're all that none of these are bad parts they're all trying to do what they you know they're trying to do the best they can with the, the tools they've got because they they think that they're helping the system you know these these protect parts actually believe that it's so dangerous for the system to experience this emotion that it, it could destroy the system it could get, they think that oh, we're going to die if we experience that so they're like no we've got to do everything we can to to keep these uh, keep these exiles out of the way keep them hidden um but but by doing that they keep them like say trapped in time so it's, it's stuck at that moment of, of when the original trauma or the original emotional wounding occurred so um th these parts can be quite quite childlike like so especially the exiles usually tend to have like when we talk about kind of inner child work or in ifs would say it's in a in a children that we've got these inner children who have kind of been trapped in these um in these positions in time without being able to process the uh the emotions of of those moments absolutely um, so it's, yeah. it's similar to if we use the addiction, right, example, and I think that we yeah. all have tendencies to, you know, dabble, and then there's, there's the, the, the real addictions, right, that, that take away from our quality of life. And so it's like, there's a trauma that happens. And then in order to avoid dealing with that emotion, right, the protector steps in, manager, whatever, steps mm -hmm. in, firefighter steps in, says, Nope, it is not safe for you in this moment to deal with this. So instead, um, you know, numb yourself out, right? Like there's yeah. always, and so that's sort of, and like you said, I mean, they're not concerned about the damage they cause because they're really just focused on the one thing. And so, yeah, yeah, they don't know, see it as damage. They see it as like, it, we've got to numb out. We've got to get away from this. We're this doing is the gonna, job, this, right? We're doing we're the doing job. The this job. is our job. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I, and I love that you also take this very compassionate approach because my therapist does the same thing. And, you know, and anytime I feel a little resentful towards some of the protectors to be like, mm -hmm. why would you keep me trapped for so long? And, and there's also this energy in me of, I've been able to handle that to, to handle this for a while, but why haven't I been able to see it? And then that's where that resentment of, oh my goodness, I finally see it. And I could have dealt with this years ago, but there was no communication. And that's what yeah. IFS is so good at is not just allowing you to, to see all of your parts, but then linking you with your parts um, through that communication of, hey, protector, hey, firefighter, I'm actually good you don't have to put out my fire anymore. Like I'm safe. I'm safe in my relationship. It's you have to update them right to who you yeah, are, and where you're at right now, it, yeah. or else you, the whole system, that whole little, the exile and the protectors, they're all stuck within that same patterning and that same program. Yeah. Um. Now it gets, it gets kind of, <laughs> it gets kind of crazy when you add in this, the quantumness to it, this kind of simultaneous aspect um, to it. And uh, every once in a while, my my therapist will be like, whoa, like you're a little ahead of me. Could you just 
backtrack a little bit and explain what you're doing because I'm because I can go in tap in um, through channeling and mm -hmm. meditation and literally see all of my parts, talk to them, have full conversations. And she's just kind of my navigator. Um, you know, I do go really rapid with sort of this sort of work. Um, but just recently, just probably a week ago, I was working with her and I realized and I think that this is going to resonate with a lot of star seeds, right? A lot of these galactic volunteers. Um, I realized that there was a part of me that was very traumatized. You could think of it as like my absolute most traumatic human lifetime on planet Earth, where I um, abandoned my family. I abandoned my human life at, to, to go pursue my mission and like just kind of go help the world or whatever. And the emotion involved in the trauma of abandoning my family and choosing a different path was mm. so painful that I've never actually allowed myself to truly feel all of the emotion that comes into play with being human. And so right. there's been a protector part of me from mm -hmm. lifetime after lifetime after lifetime after lifetime saying it's the mission instead of it's the sugar or it's the drug or right. it's the thing. It's the mission. It's the mission. It's the mission. And as long as I keep my focus on the mission, then I never really have to feel how painful and how emotional being human can be because I've got one focus. And so my lesson in this lifetime, as I've seen many star seeds having to learn this lesson, it's not about the mission. It's not about what you're here to do. We're now in the age of ascension and awakening. There are others who are brand new here who are going to take that burden on of doing the work for humanity. Now it's the time for us to do the work and be human. And mm. so I didn't realize that there's been this layer of separation between me and my human experiences because I've exiled that human aspect from that past lifetime that was super traumatic. And there's been a protector ever since saying, nope, you don't want to get too close to that. You're good. Focus on the mission, right? And and direct my focus. Um, and and yeah. it's almost like by focusing on the mission, I'm continuously justifying why I've left my family, why I've left my human existence in the past. And so I told my therapist, I said, I don't feel like I can move forward being fully anchored into this human experience and willing to feel it all until I show the protector that I am willing to feel all of the pain from these past lifetimes and mm -hmm. by feeling the pain from the past lifetimes, I'm willing to move forward and also feel it all. So um, it was. it's kind of like, it's so funny, like showing my protector, showing my inner self that I'm strong enough to be a human, right? Because it's just such an mm. intense experience. So <laughs> yeah. it's like when we add in even the akashic records and the past lifetimes and the trauma from that and then yeah. you think about your cosmic lifetimes and a lot of uh, us are traumatized from galactic wars that we've been in it's just layer on layer on layer of really this soul component right yeah so yeah these things talk... would be called sorry yeah, never said, these, these no, things would, would be called um Legacy burdens is what we'd call them in, in IFS terms. That it's oh, there's a name like, for them. There's a name for them. Like Yeah, legacy burdens that has come through past lifetimes. It could be passed through um, generations. It could be something you've inherited from, you, from your family or they can, there are, of course, be like cultural burdens, like like certain you know, wow. cultures that have been disenfranchised and been that, that they're, they're all these traumas that are kind of coming to the surface to, to be dealt with. And um, Another important po component of IFS that I really need to mention is the the ideas, as well as these um, these parts, mm -hmm. there is the most important core part that, that is called self in IFS that we refer to as the self, which is the the true self and kind of is a, a similar concept to our, our higher self, and it's kind of like everyone has an IFS discovered that everyone has this everyone has access to this no matter how how difficult your life has been no matter what your situations are and and this changed like some of the um psychological understanding because before um 
Dick Schwartz did the research, like the, the current um, psychological theory said that someone needed to have had a, a good enough caregiver in the lifetime in order to be able to display compassion and empathy and things like that. But um, Dick Schwartz found that, that some people who had had like completely horrendous lives, who had had none of that, who had had none of that mirrored to them, were able to find this self energy within themselves by getting kind of the other parts the other parts all the protectors and all the other the parts to to step back and then there's this core self energy that everyone has within them that everyone has access to and that is and you can tap into like compassion courage confidence and, and clarity it's got these like eight c words that the, the um the self uh is there so that's the kind of universal resource that we've that we've all got and that you know fits in with so many kind of spiritual teachings and spiritual messages about um you know it could be called the buddha nature or christ consciousness mm -hmm. you know our connection to source connection to the high, higher self is it's the same kind of, of idea and then um but the problem is like these protective to parts when when the traumas arrive they lose connection with with self they they don't trust it they don't trust that other self can handle this so then they try and take over and these parts um are more the way i see it is like the, the protector parts and the exiles are more kind of um like in our personality our ego base whereas the, the self is like a, a, a different kind of energy level a different vibration so absolutely um, and yeah. so so let's talk about like what the ultimate goal is and i'm going to explain to you what i think what the ultimate goal is just within this framework because okay. i think that this framework is and this is why i mean i've never brought a therapist on because you know i've i and this is why i resisted therapy my whole life it's like and how do you feel about that it's like we're not getting anywhere okay like, <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean like, just, like, like, it just stops so yeah. limiting but but this is so not like revolutionary it it is the truth like i feel like this ifs framework is truly just what what's happening and i was mm -hmm. doing ifs work the inner child stuff and the past life healing long before i ever even had names for that i'm like what there's a guy who actually created this thing that i've experienced <laughs> right it's like wild so from my sort of understanding and of course like correct me if i'm wrong under that framework but okay so we have the self we have the consciousness then we have all of the parts and the pieces and the aspects and the traumas just like fractals right we've got all these mm -hmm. fractals of of ourselves and so in my understanding the ultimate goal or at least the goal that i'm trying to obtain i want to be aware of all of the fractals um and through my awareness i want to take the air out of the balloon. Okay. I don't know how mm -hmm. else to say that, but I want to, I want to neutralize that frequency. I want to neutralize the trauma. I want to neutralize the energy that's pent up there. And then I want to invite that part of me back into the self um, with the recognition that if, and when I need you in my life, because you're an expert, you protector, you, you know, exile, you're an expert in this field of protecting or managing or whatever right and when i need you i can call upon you but you're you're back in my whole orbit right um mm -hmm. so that's sort of like if i can personally if i can get to a place where i'm existing as as all of me simultaneously rather than in a place where i'm reactionary and there's a part that comes out and i feel like i'm out yeah. of control of that part because they're just acting on their own behalf because they feel like that's their job you know but yeah. if i say hey i'll call upon you it's almost like having full conscious it's not it's not about exiling the exiles it's about inviting them in and saying you are such an important part of me and i've learned so much from you and you're so integral and i value and respect and love you but I no longer need you to be separate from me. Um, and, and I feel like that's my goal anyway, is to just be that, that whole self, uh, but also in awareness and understanding of my components and parts and utilizing them if and when I need 
is that sort of the goal of IFS? Like, what is the ultimate Yeah, goal? so, sort of. There is there is um, a specific process in, in IFS called like the unburdening process. So the the Okay. idea um, the idea is to get the permission of the protectors to go to the exile, but so that and and it's important to to be in self because if if the uh, protectors and other parts can step back, then we can connect to our own self energy, and if the protectors. open up space then we can we can um, talk to the exile and it's important to witness the exile witness this kind of the situation the origin of of where this pain came from where this burden came from which um was, was very interesting actually because one of the gfl um meetings that you did i think you were talking to dr h or something and, and he was saying about how for trauma to be processed it needs to be witnessed and i was like thinking oh that's the same as in ifs because it says we need to go back to the to the exile and let the, the the moment of trauma be witnessed so it feels understood and heard and then we can take the exile to a safe place to either bring them into the here and now or bring them to like a, a fantasy place where they feel Uh, they feel safe, kind of like a beach or a mountain, and then there's like um, a, a ritual of release that we can that's done in IFS, which is has some similarities to um, some shamanic traditions, but it's about releasing this emotional burden, giving it up to one of the elements, giving it up to the light or the fire or the earth or water or wind usually or anything else, and then that and then yeah, that's quite a profound uh, experience to go through because then the exile usually. like changes form and often you can see like a dark energy leaving that exile it's it'll, it'll get rid of it and then the idea is after that's happened i mean that takes you will take a few sessions of therapy usually and that's like you know going a bit a bit deeper but then once that's happened then the protectors can come back in and can see oh it's, it's okay i don't need to protect that little kid anymore because it's this he's now an adult and he's happy he's like um you know playing or um relaxing or or doing whatever feels good in that role and then the protectors can change their roles because quite often they don't really like doing these extreme roles they don't that's not when we're talking about integrating back to, to being the way that they were kind of intended to be when you so you can call on them it's often they would rather be doing something different and sometimes it'd be the exact opposite like you in a critic might say you know I, I really just wanted to cheer you on I really just wanted to help give you give you confidence and think I didn't like doing that role and now that I know that it's safe I don't have to do this anymore then yeah I'd rather shift and, and do this other thing for you so and then that's how we kind of integrate the whole system back to um working in, in a more harmonious way yeah Absolutely. And then let's just like, this is definitely, well, it might be in the, within the framework of IFS. I don't really know, but let's sort of like contemplate consciousness for a second, because this just sparked something in me. And it reminds me of, I'm going to use the um, example of, I think her name was Sybil back in the day who had like 25 different personalities. Sybil. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Have you I think seen that's right. Sybil? Yeah, that's a famous one. Is it? I think it's Yeah, Sybil one Ferguson. of the fan. Anyway, Yeah. so so if we think about, I know it's it's not called um, multiple personality disorder. I think it's called DID these days, right? Are they the same? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what they call it these Um, dissociative days. Yeah. identity disorder. But let's just use the example of that of that girl who went through essentially ritual abuse, and she ended up with twenty five, you know, different different parts or personalities. So I mean, it, and and I understand that you know. one of them's a baby, right? And she's like a complete reversion back to, you know, being a baby. Um, but then there was like a little boy who was like 12 years old and his name was Tom, you know? And so there's a question that kind of comes to my mind about this, which is just the, really the nature of consciousness. And I think that there's, there's an assumption that, you know, and I think it's coming from a linear perspective and a human perspective But I'm catching myself in this own assumption, which is that, you know, we're all unique individual beings. And yes, internally, you know, we're quantum beings and we can be in many places at once and we can even have parallel lifetimes and be in different places around the universe. 
Um, and then, of course, like internally in this moment, we can have multiple aspects of self, which is what we're talking about. But when we look at extreme cases of DID or extreme cases of the multiple personality, is it possible that an external consciousness, and I'm thinking it could be a spirit, right? A ghost or a spirit that hasn't crossed over. Maybe it's lingering. It gets attached to a person and then that integrates. Because when you're so broken in a sense, when you're so not that whole self, and when you are that whole self, you're connected to that pure source. But when you're so broken and fractaled, you don't know who you are. It's almost like, in my mind, you leave the door open to mm. other things to get attached. It's like, hey, I'm I'm an open parking lot. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going, but I've got a vessel. And so part of me is thinking... In the extreme cases, especially when you forget who you are and that personality completely takes over and then you're back to another personality and you really aren't even aware of the aspects that are stepping in, which is the extreme case of DID. Um, it's like my contemplation is, are they completely separate consciousness altogether attaching like a walk in experience or like we were talking, we were talking in you know, via messenger about, you know, cloning and how you can really transfer consciousness to a clone body. And you could even potentially transfer multiple consciousness into a clone body. But then the question that I have, which is just like theoretical is, you know, we think about a consciousness, a soul as an individual existing energy I have my soul and you have your soul. And yes, we're all a part of the same source, but we are different. But now there's this sort of understanding of, are we really that different? And is little 12-year-old Tommy that's attaching to that body, is it a completely separate consciousness? Or is it just a part, like, is it just not as linear, not as clear, or not as structured as that, right? Like, it really does sort of bring up this... Um, contemplation about the nature of consciousness what what are your thoughts on on those sort of things yeah it's a, a big big question and um i think usually for multiple personality disorders or, or, or most of the most of the parts are parts of one consciousness that have become in extreme roles where they've got so disconnected that they don't recognize each other um, but then there is this other concept in IFS, and um, I'm just working my way through a, a book by um, Bob Falconer. It's called "Who He's, He's Like," kind of the expert in un, in IFS. The the term that they use is unattached burdens, which is a little a little bit complicated because it <laughs> sometimes in other um, traditions they, they might be called attachments, but <laughs> but we call them un, they, but they call them unattached burdens for um, entities that have attached to that have become entangled with with a different with a different person but they didn't originate from that um personality structure so that could yeah it could be like spirits could be like lost souls like a like possession that. yeah like a possession it would be called like a yeah possession experience but and 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 the unattached burdens are, are usually in the negative camp as well because there's but there's a recognition that they can be like benign yeah. other consciousnesses that can come in as as guides and helpers and mm -hmm. things but the but unattached burdens are, are usually ones that are going to be that are causing problems and um mm -hmm. there's a whole there's a whole whole range of uh of um different types of unattached burden that, that can wow. be in, in a person's system so it can be like there's these parts that are that are in conflict and then they can also be an unattached uh, burden of some sort and um it's it's fascinating to to consider and, and it's really hard to know how common they are like how yeah. i mean they're, they're obviously less common than parts because everyone has parts we all have multiple parts but then there's how how frequent are those these unattached burdens these are the consciousnesses that have got stuck um and uh, it's it's interesting in 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 Bob Faulkner's book. One thing that he, he says is you know, because we've been through such traumatic t 
time over the last few hundred years and like you know it's been so much warfare and, and death and that there's maybe quite a lot of souls that have got stuck and because we've lost some of the traditions we don't have the same ways of crossing these souls over there's not the um the the guides or the, the acceptance of that that there, there once was so it's more likely that these can get attached to people and like you were saying it, it does seem to be um usually when someone is experiencing trauma or is in a dissociative state that like you say that the door seems to be left open that seems to be like a time when they're more vulnerable to these uh unattached burdens or yeah. spirits whatever coming in and some some will be benign and be trying to help and but some will not some will be just be as uh, parasites trying to feed or or some have completely you know lost track of who they are they've no idea who they are they're just kind of yeah. floating around trying to make sense of things so yeah and i think that you know it is it is probably a lot more common than than one would think and we just don't have a reference or a framework for it so i'm really glad that ifs even talks about entity attachment right in 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 that own in your own language um, but I think that it's really important because it does happen. And once we recognize a part of us that isn't necessarily coming from anywhere, but is one of these, you know, unattached burdens, um, mm. then, you know, you, there are certain things that we can do to, to remedy that. Right. And, and yeah. to, to hopefully get rid of them. And, and one thing that I always really believe about entity attachment and parasitic attachment is it's very similar actually to to real parasites in the body where you know they they breed in certain conditions and so entities you know will will get attached and stay there in certain conditions and the condition is it's got to match the frequency so mm. when you're in a very low frequency um, and low vibrational state maybe you just got a divorce or you're you know you drink a lot of alcohol or whatever it, the case may be that lower frequency will not only attract the entity, but the entity can kind of cling on and stay there for a while until you shift your vibration. So I think a lot of people live with these sort of parasites or entity attachments, don't even realize it, just live their lives. And then, you know, something happens. And a lot of the time, um, I'm thinking of one, one of my clients, she went to bed, woke up, had this huge goose egg on her uh, forehead, right where her third eye was, um, black and blue face. Like it looked like she got absolutely beat up. And uh, she went to the hospital. They did all this blood work. There was no alcohol, no drugs, nothing in her system. And, and, and I was like, well, what happened? Like what? And she's like, I have no idea, which is obviously why she came to me to get a session. And um, I told her, I said, you actually had an entity attached to you for a number of years. And it was right on the back of your neck. And uh, just naturally, you shifted your vibration and you ended up, it, it was a fall, but that fall uh, kicked the entity out of her mm -hmm. body. And she said, it's so interesting. You said that it was attached to my neck because she said, I wore scarves around my neck for years. And the second I had that injury, I no longer felt like I needed to cover my neck. Mm -hmm. Right. Which yeah. is so wild. So, I mean... It is, I mean, I don't want to freak people out, but, you know, it does happen, right? And and I think that this is the importance of taking a look at um, these aspects and parts of ourself. So I have a question for you, which is, um, how would one know? I, I think we all live with fractals, right? We all live with many <laughs> different parts of ourselves and, and whatnot. But if it gets to a point where it's, taking away from someone's quality of living, right? At that point in time, what are some symptoms that, and we talked a little bit about addiction, but what are some symptoms that you would be like, look, if you're experiencing these sort of things, it's important to take a look at IFS, you know, whether that be reading your own book or finding an IFS, you know, informed mm -hmm. therapist. Um, but what are some symptoms that you would say, yeah, this is, this is probably something that you should look at. Yeah. Um, well, oh, I think it's it's such a, a broad spectrum that pretty much any yeah. kind of any behaviors that you that you find yourself repeating or patterns that you find yourself stuck in, or if you find yourself getting triggered by certain certain events or certain actions, and you're not really sure why, but 
you're, yeah. you're wanting to change that um then it's definitely worth looking at ifs and and especially if you things like really self-critical thoughts mm-hmm. like if you're in patterns of, of beating yourself up or chronic patterns of, of like people pleasing something behaviors like that and things that you're noticing mm-hmm. that, that are not serving then that would be um worth you know checking out an ifs therapist like reading that reading the books as well like the no bad parts mm-hmm. is a great book by uh, dick schwartz to start with and that's got some meditations you, people can do to, to check in with, with what their is own it called parts. all your parts it's called a uh, no bad parts no bad parts okay yeah awesome yep and i and i also like even just working with my own therapist in uncovering this form of therapy one of the things that i also realized um is people with OCD, right? It's like, Mm -hmm. there's such a strong part of them internally that says, you have to tap on the door three times before you open it. Because if you don't do this, something really bad is going to happen. And so this is a case where you have to, you're, you're almost internally forced to take action on something to prevent something even worse from taking place. And I think that this is a very outward aspect of um of these parts being in control and saying you know you're in danger and something really bad is going to happen yeah and uh and a lot of the time looking into past lifetimes and doing the past life work that i do on myself and others there's an, an energy of um it's like a feeling especially just the the best example because it comes up all the time with star seeds is um you know the mission work, right? It's like, I'm so scared to step into my mission work. I'm so scared to step into my true self because if I do, I'm probably going to die because guess what Mm -hmm. happened in past lifetimes? You spoke up, you did the thing, you rebelled against and you were killed for it. And so that feeling of, if I do this again, I'm probably going to be in a lot of danger and there's a protection from doing that. And there's the self-sabotaging mechanism that comes in. um, And and that's really just that protection mechanism. But, But I think one of the hardest parts about healing those past lifetimes is they're not as easy to spot as childhood trauma. Even though a lot of the time we can blank out a lot of our traumas and tr- from childhood, it's even more difficult to be like, why am I so afraid of the water? I've never had an issue with water in this lifetime. And yet yeah. it's coming from this other place. And so I think like if if people were to pair past life regression therapy with IFS, I mean, I think the world would be such just such a better place. So it's a huge concept to unpack, but um, I'm so happy that you and I got connected via the the membership and the website because um, I've been wanting to talk about this and I just didn't have all of the information. And you're right. It's so underground. I can't like I'm mind blown that this is just not a therapy style that is as popular as it absolutely deserves to be. And I'm hoping mm. that in our lifetime, pretty. I, I would love to say every therapist is IFS informed, but I would really hope that this framework um, makes a huge sort of impact on, on the world as it is to the people who encounter it. Um, so let's just wrap up there and please tell people kind of what are your offerings and we do have your uh, website um, in the link in the description you can find kind of his other things there but yeah what are your current like what are you doing how how can you help people um, through kind of this framework um yeah so I've, I'm offering like one-to-one therapy uh, online and IFS is the the prime model that I use so basically kind of any any issues that, that people are having with their life, if, if there's like say these patterns that keep repeating or feeling stuck or um, you know, if uh, traumas, things like that, then we can look at the parts involved. That's, that's the idea. Like it will, the idea is that there'll, there'll always be a, a part involved. There's always going to be like an emotional burden somewhere that an exile that's, and, but that's the thing. Often these exiles are quite well hidden and we don't, Yep. we don't we don't we're not aware of them they've got these parts that have taken on these jobs that, that believe that they're doing the right thing by keeping them repressed keeping them hidden so i can help you with that i can help people um 
get into communication with these parts, like get them to step back so that we can uh, identify the exiles. Um, so I'm offering like one-to-one -one therapy. And the, the great thing about IFS is that it, it you do get results fairly quickly. I mean, definitely compared to other psychotherapies and it's, it's I find it so intuitive and, and most of my clients have found it so in, intuitive. I mean, it sounds a bit strange when you first start talking about it, but then people can so quickly just go, you know, go within and like connect to where do I feel that part? Where do I feel that, that tension? Oh yeah, it's in my, my shoulders or whatever. And then we can, can quickly ask that part what it wants us to know. And that's, cause that's the thing. A lot of these parts are actually wanting attention and wanting to, wanting us to, to yeah. recognize them and to know what they're all about and, and, yeah understand what they're trying to communicate so once once they get that they can they can move quite quickly um and i also offer like um couples therapy because ifs can be really powerful um for, for couples or for a parent and a child because in the you know in, in the current um kind of way relationships are idealized in, in the west we often come into relationships with an expectation of like our partner's going to fix our wounds or they're going to help help us help us heal they're going to you know compensate for our parts of the, our exiles and you know, sometimes that kind of works in the beginning and then the, the wheels fall off the relationship or whatever that's quite a common pattern whereas if we so the relationship one is about us people learning to become their own caretakers of their own exiles and their own parts and then and, and getting into that self-energy and, and you know connecting to self-energy is, is so powerful and when you know when a, a couple can can see that and, and can recognize each other's protectors then it can it can just like shift things so quickly and, and remove a lot of the blocks so yeah that's a... amazing well such a pleasure and thank you so much for just sharing this information and helping so many people because I just truly believe in this 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 framework because I've I've intuitively done it my whole life and then to have a guy who wrote a book on it is just so mind blowing. Um, so yeah, please go check out Joe and his website and you know reach out if you're interested in therapy um, or just check out his website. He's got some other things as well um, and then check out some IFS uh, books. Um, you know, I'm sure there's some good audibles out there too. So um, I really just felt like this was such an important time to do this video and share this information because we could all use a little bit of help in healing ourselves and showing up as the whole version of who we could be. That is the highest possible timeline. So as always, guys, thank you so, so much for joining us. Keep up the good work. You are loved. And I will see all of you in the fifth dimension for